Just like every Andrew Tate fan, you guys should shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new season of Nerd Central. Everyone, we're so glad to be back. We've got some exciting new changes this season. So without further delay, I'm your host, Tyrell, and let's kick it to the news. Up first, let's talk about some of the exciting announcements for upcoming movies later this year. Coming out on February 23rd, we have a film based on real events called Cocaine Bear. Yes, you heard that right. Directed by Elizabeth Banks, the film follows several characters as they try to survive attacks from a bear hopped up on cocaine after cartel members accidentally mess up a drug run when encountering the bear. For anyone curious, yes, part of this story is true, as back in 1985, a black bear was found in the Georgia wilderness that had overdosed on cocaine after drug smugglers dropped some of the illicit drug on their way to a buy. Rest in power, King. You will be missed. Up next, we have another film that's based on true events, but much more grounded in reality. Oppenheimer follows J. Robert Oppenheimer, the head physicist in the Los Alamos Laboratory, and is known as the father of the atomic bomb. The film will be directed by Christopher Nolan, known for directing works such as The Dark Knight and Interstellar. Nolan has claimed that the movie will only use practical effects, but for our sake, let's hope he finds a way to make an atomic detonation without, well, actually blowing something up. We'll get to see if this movie blows up or completely bombs when it releases on July 21st of this year. Lastly, for today, a big controversy in the Dungeons & Dragons community has reached a happy conclusion. Before I get into the story, I just want to preface that none of us at Nerd Central are lawyers, so take what we say with a grain of salt. But to start, the controversy began when a revision of the open gaming license was leaked online. The OGL essentially is an open agreement established by the Wizards of the Coast that allowed for third-party developers to create and profit from content using the D&D IP without oversight or much scrutiny. However, the revised OGL seemingly backtracked on some of the freedoms previously established, leading to an uproar in the community. Things like ensuring that all work and profits be in some way attributed to Wizards of the Coast basically destroys the whole point of the project. This caused fans to become very upset, as they saw it as Hasbro trying to stifle their creativity and make a profit off the work of others. Many threatened to boycott the new Dungeons & Dragons movie and cancel subscriptions to D&D's online service, D&D Beyond. And in a surprise turn of events, this actually worked. Wizards of the Coast apologized and all was made right. That being said, this is a major exception to the rule because the Wizards of the Coast care way more about their audience than a Paramount or a Nintendo. That'll wrap up the news for this week, but stay right there as we show off the newest packs from Jessica, Olivia, and Joe. Take it away. Hello everybody, I am your host Jessica Dobbs and welcome to Where It All Began. Welcome to a new segment I like to call Where It All Began. I will be talking about how artists got their stardom and how they began their careers. Some artists I'm going to talk about is Megan Trainer, Harry Styles, Alex Warren, and many more. And today I'm going to be talking about Ni the one and only Niall Horn. Niall Horn. He was born on September 13, 1993, to Miranda Gallagher and Bobby Horn. He is the youngest. We have one brother, Greg Horn. At the age of 11, he taught himself how to play guitar because of his love of music. At the age of 16, he auditioned for the UK X Factor in Dublin, Ireland. He made it past boot camp and he trained to be the best that he can be. At the end of boot camp, he got the shocking results that he didn't make it to the live shows. But 20 minutes later, after the results, him and four other boys named Harry Styles, Liam Payne, Louis Tomlinson, and Zayn Malik were formed to be a boy band. And the boy band One Direction was formed on July 23rd, 2010. Boys rose to stardom very, very quickly. 
they release many singles like Up All Night, One Thing, Perfect, and Drag Me Down. There were feuds between other boy bands like The Wanted. There were rumored relationships with Niall like Ellie Goulding and Selena Gomez or Haley Seinfeld. And then management would not let them be teenage boys. 2015 as well, the boys announced that they were going to go on hiatus, but that did not stop Niall from doing the thing he loved, writing music and being on stage. In 2016, he signed with Capitol Records as a solo artist and released his first song on September 29th called This Town. His first album, Flickr, was released in 2016, and his second album, Heartbreak Feather, was released in 2020. He has been on the down low. He has been recently active on TikTok and has been teasing his new song that will come out on February 17th, 2023, Heaven. Niall will be one of the judges on the NBC The Voice this spring with Chance the Rapper, Blake Shelton, and Kelly Clarkson. Niall has many more things coming in the future and recently announced that Niall Horn 3 Thank you guys for watching, and this is where it all began. I am your host, Jessica. See you next week. Hello, one and all. Welcome to Anime Stitch. I'm your host, Olivia Williams, here to talk about anything anime. Let's get started, shall we? Welcome back. Here on Anime Stitch, I'm going to be talking about all things anime, from the classics to the brand new, and anywhere in between. With 2023 just starting, I wanted to dive in into animes that are coming out this year that you should keep an eye out for. Already there has been over 150 animes confirmed, and the list is still growing today. So I'm going to be talking about two different animes today. One anime that's getting its second season and is one of my favorites I watched last year. And one of them that came out from a free app to becoming a huge anime that everyone's looking for. Let's get into it. Starting off strong, we have Tokyo Avengers Christmas Showdown Arc. Now this was released January 7th exclusively on Disney Plus. And I'm really excited to see this one because I really enjoyed the first season of Tokyo Avengers and I'm really excited to see where Takamichi goes and what trouble he decides to get himself into to obviously prevent the death of his long life high school crush, Himata. Alright, enough with pre-existing animes, let's get into the ones that are brand new to 2023. Starting off with one that I'm very excited about, and a lot of the anime community is also excited about, Solo Leveling. Solo Leveling started off as a free comic on an app called Tappy Tunes, and has grown in huge amounts where in 2021 it got its own manga, and now in 2023 is going to get its new anime adaptation. A little history about this, this is where you meet the main character, Song who in this world, they have to battle monsters, and they have these special abilities, and those people are called hunters. Now, for Sung, he's a little weak, to put it short, and he's considered one of the weakest. And this is all about his journey from becoming the weakest hunter to the strongest ever. Now, there's no exact date for when this is supposed to come out, but many people suggest it's supposed to be coming out in 2020 in 2023 around March. So that is one you better keep your eyes out for because I know I will. Well that's all I have for you guys for this week on Anime Stitch. I'm your host Olivia Williams and I will see you next week. Bye bye Ever since the creation of the film industry, movies have been using these effects. These effects, along with many other aspects, are what set the film industry apart from any other form of entertainment. Hi, my name is Joe, and throughout this season of Nerd Central, I'll be explaining and taking a deep dive into special effects used in film as I try to recreate them myself. Welcome to Get the Clip. All right, that's good. One of the concepts used to unlock the power of cinematography is to train your eye to find creative compositions. To understand today's effect, here's a quick breakdown of shot composition. Shot composition is a term that describes the arrangement of elements in a scene, basically what is in a scene and where. This includes the arrangement of props, scenery, actors, anything that comes within sight. 
If the cinematographer is doing a good job placing these elements on a scene, then an illusion begins to happen that creates this third dimensional depth feeling and makes the scene engaging to the audience. Now layers. Most often, there are three layers in shot composition. The foreground, the middle ground, and the background. These layers are the main element in films that give depth as they work with other aspects, like camera movement, and let the audience immerse themselves in the film. With that finally out of the way, let's move on to today's effect, the dolly zoom. A dolly zoom is where you rig a camera on a dolly and use tracks to move your camera while zooming in or out on your subject. This movement creates the illusion where the subject stays in place while everything around them warps, squeezing or stretching depending on your direction. This effect teaches us a lot about filming, specifically the camera lens. The differences between the wide angle lens and the telephoto lens are much more noticeable when using this effect. This effect can be used in many ways and is always in a director's back pocket, so keep an eye out for it. So with that, let's go get the clip. All right, so today we're going to be setting up the dolly shot, or the dolly is going to go right here, and our actor is going to be right here. We've got Kaylin here, who's going to be acting. So, we're ready? ready. Yep. Let's get set up. Well, that went well. It's not perfect, but I'd say it definitely worked. The movement of the camera and the zoom was a lot harder to coordinate than I first thought, and it took so many takes to get a good clip, but I am proud of it. Well, that's it for today. Click that bell and tune in next week as we'll take a quick look into speed ramping and bullet time. Have a nice day, and see ya. All right. Hell yeah. Hello everybody, we're back with another mid-break interview. Here we have one of our new crew members, Jessica Dobbs. Are you ready to answer this question? No. <laughs> we'll be right back after the break. Unlike other organizations on and around campus, here, the students do it all. KWT is a student-run and student-produced television station. To support this content and Northwest Media students, you can go to our YouTube channel, at KWT Channel 8, and watch the latest shows, or even enjoy blasts from the past. Hey you, you're finally awake. Welcome to Gen 2. Your place for all things gaming and ready tech related. Stoltzka. On this show, we play a variety of games, from sports <laughs> to horror to everything in between. <sighs> Sound interesting? Make sure to come join us every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Glad to see you're still with us and so why don't you want to be interviewed? Because up next we have the new pack from Brianna and Libby and Kayla's pack. You're not going to want to miss this. Hi everyone, I'm Libby. And I'm Bri. And this, this is If Rumor, Rumor Has, Has it. it. Welcome to the first segment of Rumor Has It. Uh, Rumor Has It is a show where we talk about celebrity news and gossip. So the biggest drama I think in Hollywood right now is surrounding the Miley Cyrus music video to Flowers. Yes, I totally agree. I've heard about it nonstop, all over TikTok, just everywhere, honestly, even Twitter, like, of course, everything blows up on Twitter. Oh, we love Twitter. The song Flowers is actually mirrored of um, When I Was Your Man by Bruno Mars. Yes. I always yeah. like I saw the TikToks like back and forth right. where they were like literally breaking down the song and like the lyrics from the mm -hmm. lyrics and like how it like matches up and everything. I was like, oh, I, love I that. think that she and Bruno Mars actually had beef after really? the release of this music video because she didn't like like ask him ask necessarily. Yeah. And I can kind of understand that because it'd be like you know I feel like if they had a sit down conversation, she's like, hey. I want to tweak this song, mm -hmm. make it like my own version, but still like 
giving credit to your side and everything. Right. But oh yeah, this song was played at their wedding. He dedicated this song. Yes, to it was at the wedding. Miley also released this song on his birthday. The bulk of like this music video is filmed in their mansion. It was like, yeah. And, um, with Miley Cyrus, Miley Cyrus's and uh, Liam, Liam Hemsworth, her ex-husband, their mansion, which I think is actually. Yes. Well, yeah, it, yeah it's the place that like he cheated on a bunch of girls with. Cheated and, on Miley with a yeah, whole bunch of girls with. While they were like together and mm -hmm. everything. That, I thought that was crazy. I didn't know this, but apparently like that mansion like burned down. Oh, that, yeah, that was There's their like home. fire damage. Yeah. yeah, that was their home in California because that's like, they were going through like a rough patch and I remember there was like an interview and she, they were like, you know what, you know, happened, blah, blah, blah. She was like, oh, that even brought us closer together, all this stuff, but little did she know, that's when everything started. It was the red carpet premiere for Aven Avengers Endgame. She films this music video in the suit that he's wearing mm -hmm. when they had like this tiff. Yeah, on the red carpet. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, where like she like went up and like licked like him. Like licked him. And mm -hmm. then he was like, a lot of people are saying like they think that he had told her to behave. Do you think he actually said that? I think so because then there's another interview where mm -hmm. like they're walking by and then like a reporter was like, oh, you know, like what's your guys' favorite dance? And that's like when she like had torts mm -hmm. on him and like. Right. I forgot got, like, about that. Because yeah, then like he like looked like just kind of like out of it and everything. And she was like, oh, he doesn't like that, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. And like, even in that video, it just kind of looked like something was going on. Well, this is Rumor Has It. I'm Libby. And I'm Brie. See you next time. Hello and welcome to The Nerd Review, the show where I review anything and everything that is pop culture. My name is still not that important and welcome to a new season of Nerd Review. And I can't wait to start this season off by reviewing the pink sauce. First things first, what is the pink sauce? Well, the pink sauce was, was a viral sensation on TikTok. Basically, it was a mysterious sauce that was pink and you didn't know what the flavor was until you ordered it. Well, I bought it and decided to do a little taste test because why not? It caught my attention, might as well try it. But I was mostly scared due to the fact that there were so many stories of the bottle spoiling, exploding in packages, and the fact that the bottles weren't even pink or the sauce itself. My main issue is with the creator of the pink sauce, Chef P. When she was first starting off and getting traction on TikTok, the whole operation, well, let's just say none of the bottles were going through FDA procedure and it wasn't FDA approved. Chef P stated in a live on TikTok that she doesn't need the approval or the FDA since it's not a medical product. Talking about FDA approved, what do you mean FDA approved? I don't sell medical product. The pink sauce is not a medical product. Make it make sense. Now that the bottles have gone through manufacturing and gotten the FDA approval and is still being sold at Walmart, to my surprise, I tried it and well, my reaction speaks for itself. Ladies and gentlemen, let us begin. Uh, the Chef P pink sauce is gluten-free and vegan and hashtag pink sauce. Let's pop the lid. Is it pop the lid or anyway? Uh. <coughs> mm. Interesting. It smells like day old ranch, even though the main ingredient is ranch for flavor. So spoiler alert, if you wanted to try this, it's ranch. So pink sauce, let's try it. In my opinion, I've had way worse when it comes to a Midwestern household. Overall, the pink sauce, in my opinion, gets a, I would say five out of 10. It's average. And I will not be buying this again. So, TikTok pink sauce. Stay right there, because after the break, we'll have an all new segment. Please, just one question. Fine, what is it? 
What's the meaning of life? Welcome back to Channel 8 News. Hey guys, we're filming behind the scenes for Creative Services. Come, come check it out. <laughs> Here with Creative Services, our job is to promote KWT, give you an in-depth look at our crew members, and shoot behind the scenes of all your favorite shows. This is KWT. And we are Creative Services. This week on Channel 8 News, we look at the Northwest Presidential Finalist, the Northwest basketball teams, business updates, and more. For the stories that matter to you, watch new episodes of Channel 8 News at 9 a.m. every Monday on our YouTube page at KNWT TV. What's up, everybody? This is Steve-O. You're watching... <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Steve-O. You're watching KNWT, practically the national champs of college TV. F*** yeah. <laughs> Welcome one and all to the brand new segment of Nerd Central, I like to call What's the Nerd? Each week I will interview a different nerd and talk about all our nerdy passions. But first on this first week, let's meet the crew. First we got Tyrell and Joe everyone. Hi. Hello. It's, it's me, Tyrell. Stop. Please stop. Yeah, I've never seen these yeah. two people in my life. <laughs> Can you? But yeah. Obviously folks, we have Tyrell, our host of the news, and an overall good boy. And we have Joe Jinx. You see, you haven't seen Joe Jinx, but he's been a massive help behind the scenes. And I'm really happy to have him on this season now. Absolutely, like massive amount of help. Can, like, can you? Can, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to trying to listen, and you're just kind of getting in the way of things. Just letting you know. All right, you can continue. Appreciate it, Tyrell. All right, so Tyrell, tell me this: what kind of nerd are you? Um, I've been getting into you know the guy named Tape Face. Oh no. You know him? I'm just. That's a good look for you. Yeah, I appreciate hmm? that. Just like every Andrew Tate fan, you guys should shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you heard me. All right. So, Joe, what kind of nerd are you? The kind of nerd that doesn't know if we should keep that joke in. Well, I'm gonna keep it in because we gotta keep moving. <laughs> okay. I'm your boss. <laughs> Hi, boss. Hello. Hi, Joe. All right, you two. I love you all. Get out of here. I guess I'll go get my severance package now. Uh, they don't have benefits. <laughs> Up next, we have two completely new faces. We have Brianna and Libby. There, everyone. Hi, I'm hey. Bri. All right. So it's uh, exciting to have uh, two new faces here. Um, what kind of nerds are you guys? Um, so I'm a music nerd. Love music, love movies, um, celebrity gossip. I like to be in the drama, but not in the <laughs> drama. That's fair. Uh, I am a massive theater nerd. Always have been, always will be. Ah, uh, theater nerds. <laughs> but I am happy to have you too. So yeah, it's gonna be a good season, and uh, why don't you do Get Out of Here right now? <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we have two more new faces with Jessica and Olivia. Say hi, you two. Hello. Hello. All right, so <laughs> let's cut to the chase. What kind of nerd do you guys? I'm more of a pop culture nerd and a Harry Styles nerd. Ooh. Specific music, kind of yes. gross. <laughs> uh, let's see, I am an anime nerd and a gaming nerd. Ooh, anime and uh, ooh, gaming. Uh, mm, you know, as we have, a, we have a contract with those, you know, freaks over at Jim. Gaming's fun, though. Yeah, get out. you know, those get freaks. Out. Nope, get Jim out. Three, those okay, inhumanoid I get it, monsters, I get it, I'm not welcome. Right, those I'll malformed, <laughs> disgusting fisheye freaks at Gen 2, which Lauren, they hey, still need hey, to fight hey, you at 2 hey, with the parking hey, lot. Calm down. Lauren, you know the drill. I will put calm you down. in the ground. <laughs> All right, so anyways. Uh, so it's happy to have you too, and uh, yeah, let's see what this season's like. And lastly, we finish this off with two familiar faces. We have Caleb and Elijah, but uh, 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 Elijah, where are you? Hold on. Oh, uh, it's, uh, there we go. All right. Hello, you two, how are you doing? Hi, Elijah, how are you? So, what kind of nerd are you? Honestly, I don't know. I would say I'm more of a movie nerd. Mm -hmm mostly because I like movies. I'm more of a music nerd because I just carry CDs on me. Cool, and I'm happy to are back. I'm and happy I'm, that I'm back. Yeah, get out, get out of here, you two, you crazy kids. Elijah, make sure to unstiffen your joints. Well, folks, 
Now we've reached the end of the season's first episode. If you liked what you saw, why not subscribe and leave a comment if you're so inclined. Make sure to spade new your pets and have a good night. This one. That's not. Oh my god! And <laughs> <laughs> have a good night. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-da-da-da-da-da. Ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-